Amen. Thank you for that special. Jesus is coming back. And we can be so thankful for that. And we can look forward to that. We can continue with our lives with that knowledge. And thank you for that special reminding us of that. And it's such a great message behind that song. And this morning, uh, we're kind of doing a Thanksgiving slash Christmas sermon. That seems to be... The ideal of the day, Brother Stan mentioned that. And we do kind of have, if you notice around, there's Christmas decorations all in here, which look awesome. If you stay for the fellowship meal, the fellowship hall is all decorated, kind of Thanksgiving-y. So we are doing both uh, the holidays, I guess, here in one day. And all the decorations look great, so hopefully uh, you'll stay for that. We're going to be in Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 21 down to verse 40. And we are going to be looking at uh, Christmas. Being that Jesus is born, and this is, we're not necessarily going to look at the nativity scene per se today. We're looking at about uh, 40, 50 days past that. Uh, in the next few weeks, we may rewind and kind of go back to the traditional type Christmas story. But today, we're looking at the fact that Jesus was born, which is Christmas. Uh, but we're going to look at some individuals who were thankful, Thanksgiving, that the Savior was born. So we are going to kind of tie it all into one. So we're going to be in Luke chapter 2, starting with verse 21. If you want to stand up, uh, you may stand up as we read God's Word. It says, And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let it thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the faces of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise in the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we just bow before you, Lord, lifting up our praise, thanking you, Lord, for Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you so much that he came down, that he lived a perfect life for us, that he died on the cross in our place, that he come out of the tomb forever defeating hell and death. Father, we praise you that because of your mercy and grace you allowed your son to do this, that if we would put our faith and trust in him, that we can have eternal life, that we can always be with him, that we can always fellowship with you, that we have an eternal home in heaven with you, Father. We praise you so much for that. Father, we lift up all the prayer requests that have been made mention this morning, those that are sick, those who've lost loved ones, those who are going through surgeries, those who are traveling. Father, we lift each and every need up to you, put in all our faith and trust in you that you are holy, righteous, and that you are in control. Father, we also lift up our country and our future, knowing that whatever happens, you are in control, and whatever happens, Jesus Christ is king and will be returning for us. Father, we pray that through this Thanksgiving uh, and also through Christmas that we would always have it on our hearts, that whether it be Thanksgiving or Christmas, the focus is you, the focus is in Christ, and we should always focus all our attention and all our energy on thanking you and giving you all honor and glory. Father, we praise you for all this, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
All right, so again, technically about 40, 50 days uh, after the tradition of the birth of Christ, they're, they're going to be coming to present him uh, there in, in chapter 2, back at verses 22 through 24. They come, they present him. And they're going to meet some interesting people in the temple. And since this is kind of a, a Christmas slash Thanksgiving, we're going to see it how thankful these two individuals are for the Savior that has come. They had been looking forward to Him. They had been praying to Him. So there in verse 25, it says, Behold, there's a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Just and devout. Just means upright in moral character. Uh, that would be a great emulation. This man is at the temple. He's been worshiping God. He's praying to God. He's serving God. He's upright in moral character. He, he, he is a sinner because he's human, but he's striving to do his best. He's striving to be good. And then when it says devout, that means he's religious. This is an interesting person we can look up to. Someone who is morally good. Someone who's religious. Someone who's following God. And notice what it says he's doing. It says he's waiting on the consolation of Israel, the consolation of Israel, consolation being comfort the one who will comfort israel that was a common title that the israelites and the jewish people used for the messiah they used it so often that it was actually in their common vernacular to call uh, the common messiah that so he's literally at the temple he's waiting he's being he's worshiping god he's being faithful he's being true and he's waiting to see the messiah could that not be said about us today or should that not be said about us today I mean, we should all, if you're a child of God, you should be striving to be upright and to be moral. If you're not a child of God and you're lost, then you don't have that ability yet. And if you don't, I pray that you come to know Christ today. But if you are here, like Simeon, and you're waiting, we should be upright, we should be moral, we should be religious, and that doesn't mean we go through the motions. That means we truly pour our heart out into worshiping God, into studying about God. But when it says waiting on the coming Messiah, He was waiting on the Messiah to come the first time as the special said we're waiting on the Messiah to come back oh what a great testimony and what a person that we can look at and realize we need these same character traits we need to be moral we need to be serving and we need to be waiting on the Messiah I think we fit that bill today that's what Christmas is about and I know Christmas is Jesus coming in human flesh as a baby to grow and mature, but you can't have Easter if you don't have Christmas first. If Jesus doesn't come to Mary in a virgin form or, and come as a baby, you can't have Easter. He had to be born. And so the thought of Jesus coming back and the thought of our salvation and the thought of everything we go through is all summed up in uh, the birth of Jesus Christ. And so here, this man says he's faithful, he's just, he's waiting on the Messiah. And what is verse 20? It says that the Holy Ghost was upon him. That means he's being obedient to God. That doesn't mean he was filled and doing crazy stuff and backflips. That means he was obedient to God to the point that God was leading him. Oh, if we could be spirit-filled today. If we could be spirit-filled to the point that God was leading us so much today. And we can be if we'd simply surrender and let Him. Look at what it says in 26. It says, And it was revealed unto him by that Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. What a blessing! God blessed this man, this man who's devout and faithful and wanting to see the Messiah. God placed it on his heart through the Holy Spirit that you will not taste of death until you see the Messiah. Oh, what a blessing that had to be. Oh, how wonderful that had to be. This man wants one thing. He wants to see the Messiah. And God says, you will get to see the Messiah. What a blessing that is. And so notice it says there in verse 27, And he came by the Spirit into the temple. This man was glad he was at the temple that day, right? What if he missed that day? God had promised him you'd see it, but what if he misses that day? It kind of brings up the idea of, remember doubting Thomas? You remember after the resurrection, Jesus meets and all the disciples except one are assembled and he comes in and he tells them fear not and he comforts them and they leave and then Thomas shows up and they go, man, you missed the Messiah. And he's like, oh, come on. And then here you got this man. It says he showed up at the temple because he's led by the Spirit. He was glad he didn't oversleep that day. Right? He was glad that he showed up. 
He was glad that he attended. He was glad that he made it. There is no telling what blessings we can receive when we come to God's house. That's why we need to always be there. <laughs> can you imagine missing a Sunday and something good happens? I mean, can you imagine? Me this man would have missed seeing the baby Messiah. And I promise you today, because it promises where two or three are gathered in my name, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit are here today. And if you stay home, you miss that. And so this man says he came to the temple. Says he came by the Spirit in the temple, verse 27. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, verse 28, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God. He recognized his Messiah. Now keep in mind, Jesus is a baby. He's small. He, he's not full-grown 30-year-old Jesus with a beard saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. He's still an infant. But this man, through the Holy Spirit, his eyes was opened and he saw the truth. Oh, can we see the truth today? We know that in the end, as things get worse and worse, God's going to allow those who are not faithful to be deceived. He's going to allow those to be not faithful, those who are not trusting. They're going to be deceived. They're going to fall for the Antichrist. They're going to fall for the law lies of man. We know that there's going to be a great turning away from the truth, turning to fables, turning to teachers having itching ears, turning to what people want to hear. But wait, may we always be the faithful who see the truth that is revealed by the Holy Spirit. Oh, let us always stand for the truth. This man sees a baby and through the Spirit he knew. And notice what he did. He said he took him up in his arms. Oh, can you imagine hugging Jesus? Oh, how sweet that would be. This man takes the baby and then notice what he says. He doesn't say, I deserve this. He doesn't say, I earned this. He doesn't say, this is all for me. What does it do? It says he blessed God. Oh, when we see Jesus face to face, may we bow before Him and bless God. May we praise Him. May we be thankful. May we be so thankful. Just This man doesn't even know. He knows He's the Messiah. He doesn't understand everything. He has no idea about the cross or the crucifixion, the resurrection. He doesn't have the Bible. He doesn't know all these details. All he knows is that God and the Messiah are here and he's praising Him for it. Notice what he said, verse 29. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy words. Verse 30. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Who are we? Oh, how great a testimony that is. He said, now I can die in peace, for I've seen thy salvation. If you're here today and you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have seen thy salvation. You have believed and you have trusted and we can live in peace and we can die in peace with Jesus Christ as our Savior. But if you don't know that salvation, then you have no hope. If you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, you're not like Simeon. You're not waiting. You don't know. You're confused. You don't have an understanding. I pray today if you're here and you don't know Christ as your Savior, that something that is said, that something that is done, that you read something, that the Holy Spirit would draw you and pull you and you'd realize it's time to stop fighting. It's time to call upon Jesus. It's time to believe. It's time to get saved. And you would do that today and then you would be saved. And then as this man said, you can know that salvation. You can know that today. You just get the idea, and I picture this guy, he's holding the baby Messiah, and he's grinning ear to ear, and he's praising God with his lips, he's praising God with his heart, he's praising God with his eyes, he's saying, thank you Lord, thank you, and he's worshiping God and thanking Him for allowing Him just to see the Messiah. Oh, if we had that thanksgiving in our heart. If we had that joy in our heart. If we had that love in our heart, if we had that desire to worship God in our heart, if we had that blessings from God in our heart, if we had that thanksgiving in our heart, if we could cry out as this man said, Lord, thank you for just letting me see this salvation. Oh, what a joy that is. And if we're saved, you should have that joy. If you're saved, you should have that same spirit and you should realize you know the Messiah and we can live every day blessing Him, praising Him, worshiping Him, serving Him, and giving thanks for Him.
him. Oh, how great that is. Then notice, the man doesn't stop there, does he? He starts prophesying, really. Verse 31, he says, Which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Notice what he says about Jesus. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people Israel. We know that he's the glory of the people Israel. Israel had been God's chosen people. They had been raised up under kings. They had failed God. They repented. God would bring them back into restoration. They'd fail him. He'd punish them, bring them back. And through all that lineage, through all that suffering, through all those people, God brings about the Messiah that would glorify Israel that would be the glory, the crowning achievement of Israel as his people. But I like the second part, since I'm not an Israelite, I'm a Gentile. I love the fact that Jesus Christ is a light to lighten the Gentiles. He's our Messiah too. We are saved because of Jesus Christ. We have hope because of Jesus Christ. We have comfort because of Jesus Christ. We have a future because of Jesus Christ. We have eternal life because of Jesus Christ. That's the greatest light you could ever have. We don't have to live in darkness. We don't have to be afraid of the dark. We don't have to be curious, wondering which way we're going. We have a Savior that will lighten the world, will make it clear, will make straight our paths, and all we have to do is believe and trust in Him and ask Him to save us and then choose every day to follow His leadership. Oh, what a great Messiah we have. Oh, what a wonderful Jesus we have. One who can lighten the light, who, who's lightening the Gentiles. And notice, this even shocks Mary and Joseph. Now, I don't know anything to compare this to. I could bring up, you know, parents with kids that were, you know, intelligent or athletic or this and that. But that pales in comparison to watching a man pick up your child and say, this is the Savior of the world. There's nothing like that. I cannot make a comparison to that. Look what he does there in verse 30, or what Joseph and Mary in verse 33. It says, And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Wow. Now they know. Mary knows. Mary was told by Gabriel that your son Jesus would be the common Messiah. Joseph is told, take your wife. She's got my son. And my son, she's pregnant with my son. They understand that this is God's son. They realize he's going to be the Messiah. But I think it just astonished them that other people already knew. Other people already knew. It says they marveled at what this man said. And look at 34, it says, And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel. You look at that and we realize that Jesus Christ is a detriment to those who will not accept him. Because of Jesus Christ, because he's the sacrifice, he can save those who accept him. But if you reject Jesus, then you're doomed to the lake of fire. What a fall. But, if you accept Him as Christ, if you put your faith and trust in Him as Messiah, then you will rise again one day and you will never have to fear hell or death. You'll never have to fear the lake of fire. You'll never fear the second death, which is eternal damnation. Because when you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will rise again in the end time. Those people who put their faith and trust in Christ can rise now. Those who are, uh, go against Him, those who stand against God, those who rebel against God are destined to fall. Mankind all has a choice. Accept Christ and rise or be detrimental. Ignore Him and fall. The choice they had then is the choice we have today. And I pray that you choose to accept Christ. And then it stops and says, And for a sign which shall be spoken against, and then he kind of goes off and testifies, but he says, Yea, to Mary, he says, A sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. It broke Mary's heart seeing her son suffer. Many of you in here are mothers. Many are fathers, grandmothers. Did you feel good when your child was sick? No. Did you worry when your child was sick? Yeah. 
Did it hurt you when your child was sick? Yeah. If your child fell and skint their knee, you felt bad for him? Can you imagine seeing your son, and this is Mary, this is her son, this is Jesus. Yes, God is the Father, but she was the chosen vessel and still His mother, and she sees Him nailed to the cross, suffering and dying for mankind, and you got to know it broke her heart. She's standing there weeping and crying and can do nothing about it. And Jesus looks down in His loving mercy that He has. And He says, John, behold thy mother. Mother, behold thy son. And from that point on, John took care of her. But you know it broke her heart to see Him suffering and dying. This man, 33 years before that happens, looks at her and says, A sword's going to pierce your heart also. Oh, it had to hurt her. Now Mary's human like us all. She cannot hear your prayer today. She's not divine. She's not holy. She was a great woman. She was a great mom. But we pray to Christ. But this man just lets her know, you're going to be part of it. You're going to be suffering. And then the next part goes back to the first part. So read the part of 34 again. It says, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Now drop down, skip the middle part, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. What is the thoughts of many hearts be revealed? Jesus Christ reveals who a person truly is. You ever thought about that? If you accept Christ as your Savior and you move forward following Him, then your heart is revealed as one that is trusting, one that is faithful, one that is striving to do good. And if you reject Christ, your heart is not good. Oh, that's hateful to say. Oh, you can't say. There's good people that don't trust Christ. Yeah, and they die and go to the lake of fire for rejecting God. That's just the way it is. I mean, that's not my rules. That's written in the Bible. That's God's holy divine plan. And it's not God's plan that any would die and perish and suffer. It's left up to the free will of mankind. If everyone asked Jesus to save you, everyone would have a home in eternity. It's on the individual. And what should break all of our hearts is the fact that not every individual will accept Him. That's not hateful. That's truth. I'm sorry that people are dying and going to hell. That should motivate and convict all of us to do more. The fact is, though, if you don't accept Christ as your Savior, it doesn't matter what you do in this world, you still die and go to the lake of fire. And so overall, you're just not a good person. It is what it is. Oh, if we would be more convicted of that. If we'd be more on fire and be willing to tell others about that. Jesus died for you. Trust in Him, believe in Him, and ask Him to save you, and you can be saved like that for eternity. It's not hate, it's love. And in the end, love always triumphs over hate. Maybe not in the next week, maybe not in the next year, but in eternity, Jesus triumphs over hate. And so that was Simeon, this man runs up and he's devout, he's religious and he's worshiping and he's praising God and he blesses God and we can learn so much from him. But we always overlook this other lady and she's in the temple too and she wants to praise God too. Look at her in verse 36. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanel in the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years which departed not from the temple but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. If you look at that, She was a prophetess. Now, they had those in biblical days. Today, we don't need prophets. We don't need prophetesses because we have the Holy Word of God to tell us everything we need to know. So we no longer need that. But one thing to mention, look at her. It says she's of a great age. The youngest she could have been married would have been about 12. Said she lived with him for seven years and he's been dead for 84. So she's somewhere around 103. Somebody in here tell me she's too old to serve God. No. She's 103, and what's it say about her? Verse 37 says, but she's uh, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. Who? She's at least 103, and she's serving God with everything she got. It doesn't say she's going around lifting heavy bricks or moving heavy buildings. It says she's fasting and praying, and we need people today that are willing to pray for the work of the Lord. Oh, how powerful that is. 
says she's nothing apart from the temple, but serves God night and day. Now, yes, yeah, she had to sleep. Yeah, she had to eat, but that just means when she wasn't sleeping or eating or doing something else, she was devoting her time to praising God. This woman was faithful. Oh, what a faithful woman she is. Now look at verse 38. It says, And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that look for redemption in Jerusalem. She sees the Messiah. She sees Simeon stand up and testify. And it says she came over and notice she gave thanks. Both these people have something in common. Yeah, they're faithful. Yeah, they're worshiping. But they're both thankful to see the Messiah. Are you thankful to be here today? Are you thankful that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? If the answer is yes to those, then we need to be like these individuals and we need to be showing it through our actions. Notice they both just wasn't sitting around on the couch and suddenly they become faithful. They were faithful anyway, and because they were faithful, God blessed them and allowed them to see the Messiah face to face before they died. Today, we need to be faithful. We need to be found serving God. We need to be found in prayer, found in service, given what we have and notice what it says there in 38. It says, She, she spake to all, to all him and to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. There, the individuals would gather in Jerusalem looking for the Messiah. There's obviously groups of people. And how did they know the Messiah had to be coming? Because they'd studied the Word of God. They'd been studying Daniel and his 70 weeks. They'd been studying the prophecies. How did the wise men come from these know what was going on? They were studying Daniel's prophecies too. They knew that the Messiah had to be somewhere appearing because the time was near. The time was at hand. And so they'd been waiting. They'd been looking. And so there's other individuals looking for redemption in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, and she testifies to them and they need to realize and we today need to realize that redemption only comes from Jesus Christ. Flip over to 1 Peter chapter 1 real quick. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 18 and 19. Many were gathering in Jerusalem looking for the Messiah. Today we have that same Messiah. He's the only Messiah of the world. He's the only way of salvation. He's the only way of eternal life. He's the only way to fellowship with God. He's the only way to have hope. He's the only way to have comfort. He's the only way to have love. He's the only way to face tomorrow. And that's in Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversations received by tradition from your father, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, we are redeemed not by silver, not by gold, not by money, not by baptism, not by family, but we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ when He shed it on the cross and you put your faith and trust in Him. That's how we have redemption. Baptism doesn't save. It's a wonderful thing we're going to do tonight. It pictures the death, burial, and Jesus Christ, but it does not save you. Jesus shed His blood on the cross. We are told that the Holy Spirit will draw us and convict us and we'll realize that we're lost. We repent by turning to God, not by cleaning our lives up first. Repentance means turn to God. We turn to God. Jesus, I realize I need a Savior. I believe You're the Savior of the world. And as Romans 10, 13, we call upon His name, which means ask Him, Jesus, please save me. When you repent, when you believe, and when you ask, you are saved at that moment you are saved for eternity you can never lose it and that's the greatest Christmas gift there ever was and we should all be thankful for that that's what Thanksgiving and Christmas are truly all about Jesus Christ salvation is found in Him Thanksgiving is found in Him are you living for Him Back in Luke, and we don't have to turn there, the last couple of verses, 39 and 40, says Jesus grew and matured in that today we need to be growing and maturing in our walk with Christ. Step one is simple. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? 
If not, and you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, then what are you waiting for? What is stopping you? If you're here and you don't know Christ and you're lost, you have no hope, you have no future. But if you're here and the Holy Spirit's convicting you, what does that mean? It means you're sitting there right now and you know that you're lost. You know that you don't have a Savior. You're sitting there and you're miserable. The Holy Spirit's telling you, quit watching the computer. Quit watching your phone. Quit watching the lights. Quit counting the fans, the lights in the house. Quit ignoring everything. Start focusing on Christ. And if you focus on Christ and realize you're lost, then you need to do two things. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, that He came down from heaven to die for you, that He rose out of the grave for you, that He's already paid the price for you. And if you'll believe that and simply ask Him, Jesus, save me, Jesus, please save me. Jesus, I believe. Please be my Savior. However you word it, if you seek that salvation, you will have it at an instant today for eternity. Why won't you come? Why won't you believe? Why don't you surrender? And then, child of God, are you living for Him? Simeon and Anna, they were saved because they looked forward to the coming Messiah, just like we look back to the Messiah. And it said they were found faithful. They're serving in the temple. They're praying. They're fasting. They're giving. They're rejoicing. And when they see Jesus, they are thankful for Him. Are you living your life thankful and serving Jesus Christ? Today, can you say, I'm giving my all? I'm following Him. I'm truly thankful. I'm living for Him. I want to serve Him. Are you even thankful? I don't know where your heart is. I don't know what you have. But if not, if you need to be thankful, today's a great day to come back to Him and be thankful for what Jesus does for you. So wherever you're at, as the song leader comes and the musicians come, if you need Christ, today can be a great day of thanksgiving. It'll be the greatest thanksgiving you ever had. It'll be the greatest Christmas you ever had. It'll be the greatest day you ever had. If you would just simply go to Christ, believe in your heart, and ask Him to save you, today will be the day of your salvation, and it'll be the new birth. It'll be your new birthday. It'll be the start of your new life, and it'll be the greatest day you ever had. Child of God, as we stand, whatever you're at, if you need to come back to Him, if you need to serve Him more, if you need to be more faithful, or if you simply need to be more thankful, whatever you need, you can go to Christ, bow to Him, pray to Him, get it right, and leave here knowing you're giving your all. Can you do that today as we sing?